Next thing, the bar clamp. We got this. And we're gonna try and fit the dash into that. First, of course, we have to move this ignition. I'm wondering if we can move this ignition to that triple clamp. So if I could mount it like right there, that would be like ideal. Do the kit in love. So yes, uh, update. So got this done. Uh, well, not done, but you know, I'll polish. I'll uh, I'll let you know when I polish this off. Um, handlebar clamps from MXV. We'll be replacing those when I get new ones for this. So it's because of that archaic speedo cable. Oh man. But we are we are running. Worried about uh, when I get the safari tank though. If the safari tank's going to come up quite a bit more, and that's going to be a clearance issue. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. All right, so I've buttoned this down. So this is how this looks now. Just like that. I think that looks pretty sharp. Right here, I've gone ahead and I've installed a Zeta triple clamp mount. I've also got the integrated flashers for the Zeta handguards, however, I have not yet got the actual protectors for them yet because I had to buy those separately. That's the problem with the Zeta kit is they don't come in like an actual kit. You have to buy, you pretty much have to buy things individually. Front fender, dash relocation, hand guards, bracers for the hand guards that mount to the triple clamp. I had to switch around the bracket for the Speedo cable it was too tight so when you're up in a wheelie and that front shock is at full extension um it's possible that it's it's pulling on the dash unit uh, a little bit but there's some i mean there's some play there's some play in the dash unit i think it's going to be fine and that that uh cable is is a real strong cable so here we go we got to kind of lift up this front number plate here yeah there we go I do, uh, I do have a KX450 2018 plus front number plate for it that I'm actually going to be putting on. I know all that wire wiring behind it and the, the headlight, of course, too, is going to be an issue. But I've actually got LED headlights that I'm hoping to mount somewhere to the bar, the handlebars. So we've had a bit of an accident. <laughs> Yeah, I went ahead, I got that skid plate on, and I've been trying to wire in these uh, heated grips, actually. I did. I don't know if I mentioned that previously, but I've got some heated Oxford heated grips for it. And uh, I've went ahead, I've mounted the controller to where the, uh, the triple tree bolts together. Um, however, I was having an issue obviously getting underneath the gas tank so i was fiddling with the gas tank and wouldn't you know it but the freaking fuel line breaks right in half so uh obviously that's probably the original fuel line uh spews fuel out all over my freaking home i don't know why they that oxford like says that you need glue super glue on these grips because these are the hardest grips I have ever had to put on because they have a hard plastic Delrin insert. I don't know why, man, I don't know if it's Delrin, but I've got the actual original throttle tube on there. I'm hoping that if I ever have to change these that or change the throttle tube, I will be able to because that is that is atrociously tight on there. Like there's no way you would ever need super glue on those. I've got it routed using the original OEM zip ties actually following the same routing pattern through and up through the frame onto this side and we are coming up through to where the gauge cluster was i think that's probably the cleanest way of doing it but the way i've been getting this grip on see i've peeled back there's a rubber edge on it i've peeled that back and i've taken some pliers and i just kind of positioned it around that plastic but not around the the uh, the handlebar and you just you just tap it and i think that plastic is actually splitting apart like apparently apparently the when i when you order these they don't tell you what handlebar size these things are for 
but obviously like that's like the most pertinent information that you could uh, you could obtain oh gee and look at that that's going to be an issue too if i didn't mention before i've lowered actually lowered the front suspension i don't know if it's meant to be lowered this much but we're going to try it out anyway we've lowered it pretty much put these right up to the handlebars right down to the bottom of where perfectly machined surface is rather than this you hear that see where that flat section is there so we we're right down as low as we can go that'll do two things for us in supermoto that will force more weight onto the front wheel which will help you in cornering keep to keep uh, traction in the corners and another thing it will help me to do is this speedo cable now has more slack so when the, the when the suspension finally or when the suspension in like in a wheelie or something uh extends out to its maximum it's not going to be ripping the back of that uh that gauge cluster oh yes oh yes yep nice and hot i did have to i did have to switch this around here a little bit so i had to go put it on the top side that way when you twist the throttle it's coming out rather than coming up and hitting and blocking you from using your brake which is a big safety issue yeah those are getting nice and warm i've turned it off now kitty can't and after spending all that time setting it up correctly huh well it is what it is yeah there was no other way of getting this off was there there now isn't that just so much better so you can see we get some good light and then you switch it off and then back on and that's like a low beam do you see that red light also there's a strobe feature yeah see one glows blue and the other one's white chinese junk so what we've done we kind of remounted this uh hand grip warmer module here to also work as a bracket for the light man those poor triple clamps <laughs> we had to custom make a little 90 degree bracket for in there in the bottom we just took those mounts that were too wide for the where the fender is and we've just zip tied once we get rid of those old signals that's going to be a lot nicer to look at so here's my shed um yeah we got her got her out here and uh yeah that just looks so much nicer let's give her a start are back wiring again because i am just not satisfied <laughs> i wasn't satisfied with that one being blue and that one being white and because they're cheap chinese lights i just ordered another set and sure enough they were again mismatched with a white and a blue so now i got a set of blue and now a set of white uh, i've already wired that in simple job i've taken the number plate off i've got also a new 4x6 LED uh, headlight and it says DOT SAE on it um, however it's supposed to be low beam high beam again it's like these where the low beam is actually just dim and the high beam is actually just bright um, I've gone ahead and drilled a hole in the bottom of it and I'm using the original a dash mounting bracket and I've just kind of bent it down a little bit stuck a screw in it I've threaded this hole I don't know how well that thin aluminum is gonna hold though so I might have to work up something else for that but we're gonna try it out anyway and uh, get it aimed correctly um, I'm wire I'm gonna I'm going ahead and I'm wiring in these these turn signals here I haven't got I still haven't got the handguard plates yet but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I just I couldn't stand the ugly look of those freaking bulbous 90s turn signals. So I'm just gonna uh, because the lens on this is separate from the base. It's kind of like how they've done here. I'm just gonna put it up here somewhere and zip tie it, 
and then just call it a day. Uh, a couple more zip ties along the way to hide the wire, and yeah, it'll be good. Oh yes, new foot pegs. <laughs> Gold, aka could only find them for the DRZ. Cheap $40 uh, Chinese JFG racing. Ooh, that hits the, uh, that hits the brake lever there. Oh well. So they're a lot wider, a lot bigger. They, they're not quite at the right angle. Like they, it looks like that one's kind of going out and a bit forward. And that one kind of does the same thing, but not as much. I don't know if that's maybe the mount or just the, it's probably just the pegs, but it'll be a little bit nicer. Anyway, looks nicer. I think. Um, with these turn signals, actually, because uh, Suzuki was nice enough to design this with a connector, I've just gone ahead and snipped the connector off of the original um, turn signal. I'm just going to go ahead and wire it on, because, you know, then if I ever have to take these off again, it'll be nice and simple. So they actually, And I actually color-coded uh, the left one and the right one. The right one's black, and the left one is gray and the negative is this black wire with a white stripe in it and it's the same for the other one although the positive wire for the other one is different so just to show you a little bit of how I wire these up I, I take the end of the wire I snip about a half of an inch off of the rubber part and I just ring it I just ring it with uh, a pair of scissors you just kind of chip at it and then you take those scissors you dig it into the groove you dig it into the groove and then you lift it up you kind of try and lever it against your thumb and that usually leaves all of the wires intact it won't strip any out and make your uh, make your wires thinner which is not what you want to do because then heat will build up in that area because there won't be enough uh, enough uh, flow and then I, uh, I just shape them in the shape of a U and then hook them together. Heat up your soldering iron. Take your solder. I, I press the wire uh, in between the iron and the solder. And then I allow it to heat up enough to melt the solder from the other side while simultaneously burning yourself because the wire will get hot, the solder will as well. Just enough to hold them together. The hardest part about wiring, I find, is the cheap Chinese junk that you get. They just, they don't give you thick enough wires. They don't give you long enough wires either. Usually, you know, you'll have something that's only just so long that you can use it. Or even you have to wire in some extra, extra length sometimes. I just take electrical type. You could use shrink, uh, that, uh, heat shrink stuff and that's pretty good cut that off like that do a couple of a couple of turns with that get one side covered and then I just go ahead and loop over the whole thing to then cover the other side as long as those connections aren't touching you'll be golden Press it down. Sometimes if you want, it, 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 electrical tape isn't quite heat wrap, but sometimes if you just take a little bit of uh, heat to it, it will shrink up a little bit. The adhesive will get stickier. You don't heat it up too much that it's melted, but just enough to soften it up and then press down firmly. And it kind of acts like heat wrap as you can see. You're kind of melting plastic over it and insulating it. Um, and once that cools down, it'll be a little bit firmer and stiffer than when you just took it off the roll. There's the finished product. So, if we flip the switch, you can see how, well, maybe you can't. The bottom row doesn't light up, okay? There. So there's the low beam, high beam. So... You see how it's really, it's really just a bright and a dim? Yeah. Um, we got these, same color now, finally. Uh, I don't know if I showed you before, they've got that, that red tinge there. Uh, still don't know why it has to have that. Um, 
as I'm wearing the battery down here we got our turn signal boy that that is one weak turn signal compared to these lights but uh, we got them on there anyway give it a second for your eyes to adjust here I think that I think that works that looks so much better than the stock DRZ headlight. Imagine, like, here's the, so here's the cowl. So there's what it was pretty much like before. Okay. And look at that. Oh yeah. That is just so, so much nicer. That's gonna be a lot easier to drive at night with, I think.